Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us and uh, welcome you all to the live international webinar organized by CGC Janjari. Well, my name is Kamal and I look up the International Affairs Department of CGC. So what happens is uh, we like we provide the students the international opportunities like summer schools, credit transfer programs and exchange programs. So today uh, we are going to discuss the topic effects of COVID-19 in global supply chain by the impeccable speaker and professor of University of Missouri St. Louis. Well, it is uh, AMSAL is the largest public research university in Eastern Missouri with more than 16,000 students. And AMSAL is a tier one national research university according to World Report. For this, I would like to uh, welcome Ms. Lian. She is the Global Interim Executive Director of uh, this wonderful university, AMSAL. Hello, ma'am. We also have uh, Dr. Lee, Dr. Hayatal Lee. He's the professor and department chair of supply chain and analytics. Hello, sir. Hi, everyone. Glad to be here. And I also like, I'd like to welcome Ms. Priyanka Aluwalia. She's the South Asia and country manager of uh, AMSO. Hello, Hello ma'am. Welcome to CGC. Thank you so much, Kamal Preet. Hopefully, very soon, I'll be able to meet the students personally as well. Definitely, ma'am. Uh, so, Dr. Lee, uh, how's the situation in, in U.S.? How's the COVID impact now in U.S.? Good question. We are uh, relatively much more stable now. Uh, I think people are more cautious now. People wear masks uh, in public places, especially indoor. And universities um, uh, like AMSO uh, have taken very careful measures to make sure uh, to ensure a safe uh, environment for our students. So we have okay. uh, purposely uh, moved most of our classes 100% online while maintaining a small portion of classes as blended. Uh, but we have a very um, strict um, uh, rules and uh, uh, regulations to, to maintain safety on campus. Great. In India also, sir, uh, uh, we are, we, the students are getting online classes. So we have uh, some like uh, the, some practical works as they're, they're, they're coming to the campus, but most of the students, most of the classes are completely online. So I think uh, this is a new normal, we can say. This is a new world, we can say. So we have to like, we, because thanks to technology, thanks to the innovation and technology that we are interacting during this difficult time also. So uh, now I request uh, Dr. Lee, you can proceed with your uh, presentation with your topic. In the meantime, I can, we, can, uh, we, we can turn off the cameras and Dr. Lee, you can proceed with the topic. Sure. Hello everyone. My name is Haitao Lee, I'm professor and chair of supply chain and analytics department College of Business Administration at University of Missouri St. Louis. Thank you so much for this opportunity for me to share with you the current challenges of COVID-19 uh, as well as our uh, responses here at AMSO, especially uh, supply chain and analytics department. As faculty, we conduct very relevant, timely research and up-to-date curriculum for our students to really cope with the current situation. I would start with an introduction of, general introduction of what supply chain is and the use of business analytics to make data-driven decisions for supply chain operations, and then talk about the impact of COVID-19 pandemic on global supply chains. And finally, I do want to spend some time to introduce our academic programs here at AMSO. This is a schematic view of a generic supply chain. I use a beer supply chain uh, for one good reason. As you know, Budweiser, M. Hauser Bush is here uh, in town at, uh, in St. Louis. Uh, so you can see a uh, general supply chain may, may, can be very complex. It may have multiple stages to enable physical goods from the source, that's from the suppliers, through producers, manufacturers, and to 
warehouse, distribution center, and finally to the customers. If you notice at the down below, at the top of the diagram, we're showing the flow of information. Information here mainly represents the demand. Customer demand information flows backward through the supply chain. In general, supply chain can include multiple tiers, can be very complex, involves tons of players. This is perhaps a more relevant example. This is a illustration of agribusiness supply chain for edible oil. Uh, and here we're showing a mantis in New Delhi, India. And as you can see, products can flow from farmers, farm gates through multiple channels to the retailers and customers. And again, there are so many players that may play a role in a agribusiness supply chain. And the food supply chain often has lots of challenges and complicating factors to think about. For example, the impact of weather, the rainfall, the soil conditions, which really make some decisions in food supply chain very challenging and complex. Why is supply chain important? Well, it impacts our, our everyday life. We, we've seen lots of reports nowadays for the fast growth of e-commerce that often requires multiple modes of transportation. For example, air, truck, rail, and barge. And I just read a recent report about the fast growth of logistics industry in India that's almost as 10% as annual growth rate. And it impacts our daily life. Think about our food, food supply chain that supply us fresh food, meat, dairy every day. Supply chain is also such a fast growing and very relevant, vibrant uh, discipline that's driven by the fast growth of technology. For example, Internet of Things. Nowadays, through technology and information technology and infrastructure, we're really better connected than before. We have our data and information can be shared, stored in a seamless way. But the question is how to use such data to make data-driven and efficient decisions to improve operation efficiency. And finally, the picture here shows the drone. As you, as you know, um, using drone for delivery, some critical products, for example, the healthcare products, drugs, and perishable goods are becoming more and more uh, realistic nowadays. Many companies have already piloted practices. We'll soon see drone delivery as a reality. Now let me talk about analytics. Analytics is about the science of better. That is using science, mostly applied mathematics to make better decision. But how? Well, here are three general ways. First, we would like to describe what happened and what is going on using the so-called descriptive analytics. This is perhaps some of the methods you are familiar with in statistics. For example, this descriptive statistic using a histogram uh, and distribution. And secondly, people often would like to go further to predict what will happen using the so-called predictive analytics. Again, in statistics, we can use regression models, we can use time theory analysis to forecast or predict the future. Now, the third one, and a very important one, is the, the question of so what, right? After you predict what's going to happen in the future, what should you do or react to achieve the best outcome? This is where we need the so-called prescriptive analytics or optimization. The reason I put, I present you business analytics together with supply chain is because indeed there are lots of areas in supply chain where business analytics can play a very, very important role. So these two can really be leveraged together. This is a more depth view into analytics. Here I'm showing the three pillar of anal analytics I showed you earlier. So you can see descriptive, predictive, 
and prescriptive answer different questions. They serve different purpose and use different methodologies. You can see the three circles interact with each, with each other for good reason, because these methods often can should be applied together with each other for making better decisions. This is a survey according to Gardner. This is a very well-known consulting firm for education on the talent gap on the so-called citizen data scientist. The term citizen data scientist means the type of graduates and professionals who can bridge the gap between a pure data scientist who may have background or training in pure mathematics or computer science with the domain of supply chain. So they project in the next 10 or 20 years, there will be a huge significant gap um, for people who can bridge, who has the knowledge in both domain, that is supply chain, as well as business analytics. So this is a very fast growing and vibrant area. So I do wanna highlight um, our supply chain and analytics department program at AMSO. Uh, we have a very strong industry uh, support. We have a department supply chain advisory board consisting of 15, 16 companies. These companies include some of the major companies you probably are familiar with. How many of you like beer? <laughs> uh, AB InBev, right? Uh, they, their main, main product, Budweiser, is world renowned, very, one of the most popular beer brand. Um, Monsanto Bayer, uh, this is one of the uh, largest uh, bioscience company uh, dedicated in bioscience industry and agriculture. And Boeing, certainly, as you know, Boeing's military uh, operation and manuf manufacturing facility is right here in St. Louis at our back door. And uh, Unigroup, this is um, Unison and Unigroup is part of uh, the Hop Group, which is the um, largest uh, 3PL company in the North America. Gray Bar, this is Fortune 500 uh, company in electronics uh, vendor. WWT and Express Scripts, they are all in the vicinity of AMSO. And these board members actively in, involved with um, our faculty um, in multiple dimensions to, to help us do a better job in our educational program, our cu curriculum, our faculty research, as well as our students' engagement, which I'll talk about, about, about more in a minute. Here are the career opportunities uh, you can expect uh, getting a supply chain and analytics major. As you can see, um, the door is really wide open because um, when you have a degree in supply chain and analytics, you can get jobs you know, in various functions of a company or, or organization. Uh, for example, sourcing and purchasing, manufacturing operations, transportation and logistics, supply chain planning, and some of the cross-functional areas, uh, for example, project management. And uh, certainly, you know, some more technical positions uh, involving the use of data science and business analytics. So here are uh, some very recent survey about uh, the pay, okay, the salary for uh, supply chain graduates. As you can see, the mean, uh, the, the median salary of a supply chain professional is above 80,000, okay? Uh, that's the median. And this chart shows uh, the salary level based on the degree, okay? Ranging from associate degree, bachelor degree, and master graduate degree. And uh, the salary by how long you have been in the, in the, in the industry, you can see supply chain for professionals pay um, really is, uh, um, is commensurate with their experience in the industry. And you can see a steady growth as you know, you stay in a career longer. Now let's talk about COVID-19. Yes, as we all know, uh, this, this has been a unprecedented um, 
uh, challenge for the human being or for the entire world and the entire society. And um, it certainly brought significant supply chain disruptions across multiple industries and all over the world. So I summarize these disruptions from the supply chain perspective. I'll start with the supply side um, disruption. That is mainly uh, the shortage of capacity and lots of uncertainty in terms of, you know, uh, production and uh, the, the supply side. And then certainly on the demand side, so you can think of panic buying. So interestingly, I don't know if you heard the, the news, at the beginning of the pandemic in the US, we had been for a couple of weeks, the shortage of toilet paper, can you imagine? But there is a good, very good explanation behind that uh, shortage of toilet paper, because toilet paper is relatively slow movement uh, goods, you know, in, the, in typical times. But all of a sudden, the demand suddenly increased. So the longer lead time of toilet paper cannot uh, meet the sudden increase of pa such panic buying. So that causes a shortage of uh, toilet paper. Quite interesting, right? And again, the, the, where, what we're seeing now is on the demand side is lots of uncertainty and fluctuation, you know, in terms of demand for drugs, goods, and other type of um, uh, uh, products. Logistics and transportation, huge disruption. As the pandemic um, become pre prevalent all over the world, we are seeing the, the borders are shutting down, the air transportation and ocean transportation ports are shutting down. So which really reduced, has reduced the traffic and volume, which has disrupted the global supply chain. Especially uh, for, for the US, I can, I can share with you some really challenging uh, situation we're facing for the healthcare supply chain, especially the generic drug uh, supply chain, because lots of those um, supply of raw materials came from Asia and partially from India and partially from China. Operations. So this is, uh, can be due to the shortage of labor, as we know, uh, as people become very cautious because of the so social distance requirements and you know, the, the shrink of labor because of uh, the pandemic, the shortage of labor gonna, gonna certainly impact the capacity of operations in terms of uh, uh, production. So in all, these disruptions are impacting multiple industries. Some of these industries are, you know, um, impacting not, uh, not only our daily life, but the national uh, security. For example, healthcare, talking about medical supply and uh, um, protection equipment, the PPE and food and agriculture. It is a huge challenge to the mankind. So now let me share with you some of uh, the companies are, most of these companies are in our, our advisory board. Uh, we we um, hosted a, um, a webinar uh, back in March and, and, and April um, to ask the companies to share how they, what are their responses and how they cope with COVID-19. Let me start with Express Scripts. For those of you who do not know Express Scripts, uh, is um, this is a Fortune 500 company. In fact, their, their headquarter is right uh, at AMSO campus. Um, this is a um, company um, that is uh, in the so-called pharmaceutical benefit management industry that, that manage the, 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 the drug purchase for individuals as well as companies and organizations. So they pretty much uh, reside um, in the middle of a pharmaceutical supply chain, really serving as the bridge between the suppliers and manufacturers and vendors and the customers. So for them, they are, they are seeing significant uh, uncertainty and challenges. So what they have done is a very systematic way of managing supply uh, risk, uh, risks. So they have a well, developed a system and framework to monitor, access, predict, and mitigate supply chain risks. 
and those measures has been very effective. Amaron is a very large utility company, um, uh, energy company in the state of Missouri and uh, and Illinois. Um, so they have making been making sure to still maintain sufficient in inventories of all kinds of equipments and parts and as well as workforce to maintain high service level, especially during this very critical uh, times. They do want to um, maintain high service level by, by keeping sufficient inventory. So you can see these um, uh, risk mitigation measures are, could, could vary by industry. Bangi is a food uh, a processor company uh, also here in town. Uh, they, they actually recently moved their headquarters back to uh, St. Louis a couple of months ago from New York. So that's really good news for us. Um, and they have been coping with various of disruption, demand, uh, demand side, supply side, as I mentioned earlier, you know, um, by adjusting their pricing and adapting their uh, logistics and transportation um, and other marketing decisions. So again, food supply chain is quite complex. So they have been using, you know, all kinds of measures to mitigate the um, uh, the, the supply disruption. Unison, as I mentioned, as I mentioned earlier, is a large three PL uh, third party logistic provider uh, here in town uh, to provide logistics, transportation, and supply chain services to shippers, okay, to their customers. So they've seen significant shift. Of, Freight, freight volume geographically and in terms of time, okay? So both geographically and dynamically. So they, they really need a, you know, a better, more responsive way to plan their freight movement and the movement of empty trucks, right? To, you know, better utilize their limited resources. How about AMSO supply chain and analytics department? We do feel the call because we are supply chain and analytics uh, um, experts. And this is certainly have impact on us. We felt the, the duty to, um, to respond and contribute uh, to, to this crisis. Uh, as I often share with people, uh, coping such um, significant uh, pandemic and crisis really need concerted efforts from multiple uh, dimensions, okay? Not just healthcare. Healthcare is important, but not only that, supply chain is very, very important as well. So the department held a panel session back in April to discuss the impact of COVID-19 on the Missourian uh, businesses. And the, our faculty has been conducting very relevant uh, pr research projects uh, sponsored by Express Scripts and Amram uh, to, to um, uh, address the issues, for example, supply chain risks uh, and supply chain network design that's related to um, COVID-19. And a recent project uh, was founded by the International Agriculture Trade and Research Consortium to study uh, the impact of labor shortage on the uh, food markets and supply chain. And uh, we also submitted a research proposal uh, to, uh, on, on the topic of how to manage the pandemic supply chains in general um, to the Office of uh, National Intelligence. Now, I do want to uh, highlight a few facts about St. Louis uh, as I about to talk about uh, our programs here. Uh, in supply chain and analytics. St. Louis is known for, uh, for being gateway to the West. Uh, so I, I don't know if you've seen the gateway. I, I really should have included a picture there, but I, I'm sure most of you have seen uh, the arch, gateway arch. That's a symbol to gateway to the West. The state of Missouri is within 500 of 80% of the US agriculture and livestock production. Uh, and the greater St. Louis region in the center of a uh, world-class freight network. Uh, we're talking about multimodal system of rail, truck, and barge, okay? It has very uh, efficient port barge system, second largest inland port, third largest rail hub. And in 2017, uh, it was recognized 
as the ag coast of America. So this, this is certainly the perfect region uh, to study supply chain and logistics. So some, um, some very uh, uh, points of pride to share with you about our programs. Um, you know, we here at AMSO, we offer the most comprehensive supply chain programs in the state of Missouri. We have programs ranging from Bachelor of Science in Business Administration, that's BSBA emphasis and minor, up to MBA with supply chain emphasis. And I, I wanna highlight our new Master of Science in Supply Chain Analytics program and up to PhD program in, in Logistics and Supply Chain Management. We were recently ranked number 15 supply chain logistics online program in the US by the Great Value Colleges. BSBA in Supply Chain Emphasis is also now among the first cohort of the UM Systems e-learning initiative. Yes, many of our classes are available online. And um, uh, our new our, our new MS program and our many of our curriculum are designed to have the focus on both supply chain domain and analytics, as I shared with you earlier, to really meet the needs for the citizen data scientist for the future. And again, our advisory board is really, uh, is what we really are proud of. Here I wanna highlight some of the uh, faculty research projects uh, we, are, we are working on. This is an illustration of a research project we're working on using drone to deliver vaccine in less developed countries. We're using the country called Vanuatu. I don't know how many of you heard this country. This is a country in the South Pacific Ocean, somewhat close to Australia. Um, but, but we use this Vanuatu um, islands as, as our case study because of its lack of um, transportation infrastructure. You know, um, and our initial study find using of drones can significantly improve uh, the efficiency and reduce the cost of, um, of vaccine delivery and improve uh, the, the healthcare. And the second graph shows you the current project we're working with Express Scripts on studying how to um, better predict and mitigate supply risks in the pharmaceutical industry. So here I'm showing you all kinds of complexities in pharmaceutical industry um, that makes this topic very challenging. This graph here shows you the current project we're working with Amara to redesign their uh, supply chain um, network. So the triangle shows their potential uh, distribution center and the, the small dots shows their operating center. That's where their customers are. And certainly a research project on study food supply chain, how to maintain efficient food supply chain system to ensure quality and um, cost effectiveness, especially under COVID-19 uh, pandemic. Okay, now let me give you an overview of our supply chain and analytics program. Uh, so here I wanna focus on our graduate program. Uh, especially the, our master program, okay? Um, uh, our, we have our new MS program in supply chain and anal analytics. So this program will be in place, uh, hopefully as early as spring 2021. So this is where at the very last stage of the final approval. We do have MBA program with two emphasis uh, in our department, that's supply chain management emphasis and business analytics emphasis. Again, we also have a PhD program if you are, if you are interested in. Our program is, is not only featured uh, by its up-to-date and real-world relevant curriculum. We also um, have all kinds of um, delivery methods, online, hybrid, and traditional in-person to provide students most available options. And we, we also, um, work very hard to enhance student um, experience. For example, our, our supply chain club, we have over a hundred members now, uh, you know, uh, the student club held all kinds of activities, including workshops, seminars, 
you know, internship career fairs and facility visits, you know, to really this extracurriculum activity really enhance our students' experience. We have our unique mentorship program. This is where we we pair our top students with our board members pers uh, in person to really give them very personal um, interaction with industry leaders. We have an excellent guest speaker program to map uh, the most relevant topics with industry leaders and experts. We bring them into classroom to make our classroom teaching more relevant and more valuable. We have excellent internship programs, you know, through not only our board, board companies, but also many companies in St. Louis, um, in the St. Louis region. I really wanna highlight our new Master of Science program in supply chain analytics. This is the program that has focused again in both supply chain and the methodology of analytics. So um, we do, do think this, is, this will be in high demand and companies really like it. From the very start, we got lots of input from our board members from the beginning of designing this program and curriculum. As you can see, we're gonna start our students with two fundamental introductory courses, 5310, to introduce the fundamental concepts of supply chain management, and 5300 on business analytics to give students the broad coverage on all three components of business analytics, that is descriptive, predictive, and prescriptive or optimization. So these two tracks goes down um, from the left hand side, it goes down to supply chain operation management 5320 to introduce more in-depth topics in supply chain operation management, as well as another to related topic on strategic, strategic sourcing. Now on the other side, on the right hand side, um, extending from 5300, we're gonna dive more into predictive analytics and data mining as well as more in-depth on optimization. We also have two required courses we call two synthesis courses. That is 6330 on business logistics systems and 6331 supply chain modeling to, to introduce um, the methodology on how to build met optimization models for all kinds of supply chain related decisions. So these are the eight required courses and the program also required two additional electives. So this is a um, 10 course, 30 credit hour program. And I wanna emphasize this is indeed STAN um, uh, designated program. STAN uh, stands for science, technology, engineering and math. Uh, designated program. One advantage of STEM designated program is that you do get a more favorable policy uh, when you are applying for OPT, which is very important for international students uh, like you after graduation. Here is uh, some sample curriculum paths. So students can complete the program in either two years or as quickly as 16 months if they take summer class. I can give you uh, more information uh, uh, about these paths if you have questions. And um, this slide shows you our MA, MBA program with two emphasis, that's supply chain management emphasis and business analytics emphasis. So um, the MBA with supply chain emphasis consists of two core courses. These two core courses, as you can see, are the same two, um, are same two starting courses in the new MS program. And plus um, 5320 and two additional uh, supply chain and analytics electives. Business analytics emphasis requires uh, 53, again, 5300 and 5310 plus two um, additional methodological courses on predictive analytics and optimization, plus one more elective. So you can always um, reach us um, 
to our graduate advisor, Ms. Yuan Chen. Uh, here is her email. And anytime to me, uh, myself, my email is here. And also, I'm still global, um, Lee Hasagawa. Thank you. That's all um, I have for you today. I, I'll be happy to answer any questions you have. Thank you, sir. It was wonderful uh, to have your words on on this topic. So we can take the Q and A at the end of this session. I request uh, Priyanka to proceed uh, more about the university. Uh, thank you, Kamal. Uh, thank you uh, for giving this opportunity to share about our wonderful institution. So as uh, Dr. Lee have already explained, we are a tier one institution. So as per the World Report ranking, we are among the top six person institution worldwide. As most of you would know that uh, the uh, if we talk about the world report rankings, a lot of US institutions come on the top. And same, we are among the top 6%. As you can see on the screen right now, many of you would see uh, USA map and in there a mustard or a yellow color. So that's this is Missouri. So Missouri is a state out of the other 50 states of the USA. And this star, that's where St. Louis is. So this is where we are located. We are at the border, as you, can, as you can see, and we are touching Illinois. So you have an opportunity to even explore the nearby places also uh, and have fun when you have uh, time holidays to actually uh, go to different places. And we, when we talk about tourist attractions in St. Louis, so there is so much to explore. As Dr. Lee was talking about the Ark, so that's it right on the top. So this is Gateway of Ark. Um, so um, a very uh, popular tourist uh, destination and then games, because most of us uh, in Northern India, we are very fond of games. So we have different kind of games activities keeps on going on, be it Cardinal baseball game, blues hockey game. And then um, if we talk about New York City, we are very fascinated because of so many facilities which are there. But when we talk about Missouri, we have actually so much to explore in Missouri and uh, we'll be sharing more on that. And uh, First is, I would say, the Forest Park, which is even bigger than what you will find in New York City. So we are a city which is full of life, very vibrant, full of colors, uh, so many people around from different parts of the world. Uh, yet at the same time, it is not very hushy-bushy like a very uh, um, uh, any other metro area. So it is still relaxed and yet full of fun, loads of nightlife and a lot of entertainment to do, many theaters, uh, even free attractions like St. Museum Zoo, Art Museums, and so on. It is among the 20 largest metropolitan area. And we all know what are the different benefits to stay in a metro area rather than a non-metro area. At the same time, do not worry. You will not be shedding across a lot of money because our cost of living is uh, very low. Connectivity-wise, we also we have got all sorts of transport options available. So you need not to worry that you might need to have your own conveyance, your own car. So we have public buses, we have train, we have metro. We even have uh, shared drive like what we have it in Chandigarh, like Uber and all. So we even uh, have Uber and different shared uh, uh, rides like Uber. As I mentioned, uh, St. Louis has got a lot of foreigners around. So it is third fastest in terms of the foreign born population. And with the help of St. Louis Mosaic Project, there are a lot of starters which are already in place, which is a great work opportunity for our students, those who want to do their internships, and those who want to do their OPT. OPT is optional practical training. So optional practical training, you can do after completion of your studies, after completion of your degree. So OPT can be from up to one year and can be extended for another two years for up to three years. Uh, and the best part is like with our supply chain analytics, since it's a STEM designated program, so you can get your OPT extended for another two years and can work for up to three years in the USA. Uh, depends on how much time of internship you are doing, but this is an up to, as I mentioned, up to three years of OPT option is what you have. So a lot of startups uh, are there for uh, you to look out for work options. And then since there's so many foreigners, so why to miss out the fun part? So you will be uh, able to join in the different uh, festivals, uh, understand about their culture, enjoy with them and have fun with them. Let's talk about our India community because uh, we are somewhere deep rooted and we want our festivals, our people, our cricket. So you'll find it all out here. So we have India Association of St. Louis. We have Mahatma Gandhi Center, wherein you can be connected with the, the Indian community. Also, there are so many uh, social media groups, uh, inclusive of Facebook groups. We all know we are very much onto Facebook. So, And also cricket leagues. You can enjoy cricket, play cricket, and have fun. 
Also, you will not be missing on your major festivals, be it Holy Diwali, Republic Day. So everything, all the major festivals are celebrated. Groceries, you won't be missing on. We have around five grocery stores within 30 to 40 minutes of drive from wherein you can get your Maggi, your snacks. We have residence options with the three-time meals, uh, which is like both on campus and off campus. How it is, it is your choice if you want to cook your own meal whether for snacks or to buy the grocery, like uh, to cook your meal, you can even go ahead and uh, buy the grocery from the grocery stores. Also, we love our movies and why to watch movies only on Netflix uh, or uh, Hotstars when we have uh, uh, all the new releases, maybe a Salman Khan or whosoever is your favorite actor, you will be able to see that in the AMC Classic Cinema. So there are regular mo uh, 14 movie shows. So it's like though you're away from India, but you will not be missing on your major things, be it movies, be it festivals, our food. So you'll find everything and even the people around our Bhangra, the, the dance which we love. So you'll not be missing out on anything. Then worship. So we have Sikh temple, we have Hindu temple. A Sikh temple, what we call as Gurdwara. So there is a regular langar also, which takes place in the Sikh, Gurdwara, in the Sikh temple. Then we also have mosque and Buddhist temple. So apart from like I talked about the startups, so what about only startups? No, there are good number of organizations like Dr. Lee also did share on one of the slide that there are so many organizations, those who have got their offices in St. Louis. So I'll talk about the Fortune 1000 companies. So there are 14 companies as such, those who have got their office, those who have made their headquarters in St. Louis. So to name a few is like Express Script. So Express Script, uh, their headquarter is right there in our campus. Then we have Cortex Innovation, Donald and for Plant Science Center. So many um, other work options like Amron, Boeing, and so many companies as such are there wherein you can actually find the employment option. So we have a mix of all. So we have startups, we have uh, uh, big size companies, which are Fortune 1000 companies and also medium size organizations. So uh, because most of the students, they come up with the question like uh, whether we will find work or not in, in within St. Louis or we will have to move out of St. Louis. So I would say, that uh, it's not necessary that you need to move out of St. Louis, you will find ample work options within St. Louis itself. So Leanne, would you like to add on something uh, to it? Uh... Thank you, Priyanka. And thank you, Dr. Lee. Um, you have like given a fantastic introduction today um, about uh, our university here. And uh, I have very little to add but I wanted to do. Uh, I wanted to add one thing only in general. So when um, students and their families are sitting in front of all this information, and they have like twenty different places on the map, they look at at the map of the United States. This can be overwhelming. Then prices can be overwhelming. Programs can be overwhelming. So let me share some. Um, since we have a smaller group here today, as I have noticed, let me share some, some personal insights. So I, uh, I'm originally from Germany. I moved to the United States eight years ago, and I hadn't even really heard of St. Louis to my big shame and embarrassment. Um, and um, I heard about the advantages of the Midwest, and, uh, especially about the quality of life in St. Louis. But um, where it really makes a difference is when you as a student come to this campus and you ask yourself, where do I wake up? Where do I grab my food? How do I get to those places? And who are my friends? So these immediate things and uh, these immediate things are so well answered at OMSO because uh, number one, like Professor Lee just said, I was sitting here smiling, uh, Professor Lee, during your presentation because I know your clubs. I know the happy students saying, oh, Professor Lee, and uh, uh, yeah, we're grabbing lunch together and we see each other at the club and he introduces us to the, uh, to the business world right away. So this is not a campus where you are drowning in a, um, in a pool of like 5,000 international students. We have the advantage, we have about a thousand international students. We know our students personally, personally and Indian students in particular have a great advantage that their command of English is already really great. Uh, and then 
uh, due to uh, Priyanka, you had uh, the slide about Indian life in town. So uh, the community is big enough to feel like to have enough opportunity and small enough to know each other. So, and in a nutshell, this is like uh, Priyanka, as you know, I studied in India for a year as a German. Uh, and I had five options. It was Delhi, Varanasi, Mumbai, Pune, or Madras. And I ended up in Pune. And my takeaway is, what, what did I learn in Pune? I knew everybody I need to know, needed to know. And it was not the big hustle and bustle of Delhi or Mumbai. And I'm still connected to the city till today, 20 years later. And I predict every student coming to our university from India will have that particular experience. And as you said, price, the price value ratio is huge. And Professor Lee had given a wonderful chart about uh, entry um, uh, careers and, uh, and salaries. So your investment, your return on investment is really there. And the last thing uh, besides the, uh, the, the university itself, uh, Professor Lee, you mentioned the development of the Indian supply chain uh, market. And um, I think like when you choose a career these days, it is no longer like I study, let's say, business with a focus on finance and I'll be a finance person for the next 45 years. These careers have changed. And in supply chain management, you have a great level of flexibility actually to say, well, I, I might start as that project manager with my background and with my heavy analytics, and then I move up over to the, uh, um, the more operational side of the supply chain. And I can still, with my business background, become a business manager and the CEO. So this is, I'm excited about this program. Um, so, um, but I think, we should give our participants a chance to ask questions and I stop talking now. <laughs> Thank you, Leanne, for that. I just give a little bit brief on our admission requirement and uh, the accreditation of our business department. So I'll just take a few minutes more. So as we have already covered a lot of points, which Dr. Lee has also done. So we have uh, over 120 student organization. We have very supported career services team also. Uh, which helps the students not just for interview uh, preparations like um, resume building interview preparations. However, we also do organize on campus career fairs. And even in the tough time of COVID-19, we were successfully able to organize a virtual career fairs and it really went well. So we are trying to support our students to the best of our um, uh, 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 capabilities uh, in order to help them for work options also be their internships or their OPT. Then we also have our an honors college in which we are offering uh, uh, research options to our students uh, at an undergraduate level as well. Now, since uh, this is uh, about supply chain, so how can we miss about the accreditation? So we have AACSB accreditation. So our program of uh, business and accounting are all AACSB accredited. And AACSB accreditation, it is only there with 5% of the business school worldwide. And you can understand the degree value and with AMSL, uh, we have dual. That means our business and accounting, both are AACSB accredited, which only 2% of the schools have earned worldwide. And our supply chain analytics, this is under a business department. So this is also AACSB. And if I talk about in India, it's only IIM Lucknow who has got AACSB accreditation. And we all know what is the value of our IIM Lucknow degree. Our undergraduate international business program, that's been ranked top 25 nationally from past consecutive 17 years. And uh, our graduate criminology and criminal justice is best five in the nation. We have uh, 50 bachelors and 40 graduate degrees program for different schools and colleges. Then uh, our admission requirement, if you're looking for an admission for an undergraduate degree, we require 58%. IELTS, PT, TOEFL, everything is accepted. And at a graduate level, we're looking at 68% with the backlog should not be beyond three. Again, IELTS, PT, TOEFL, and Duolingo. Duolingo, 105 and 110. You would all know that Duolingo is an online English test, so Duolingo is also accepted. Uh, this is about our undergraduate fees. This is an approximate fees. We are also offering wonderful scholarships options, as you can see, which starts from $6,000 to $14,000. And an undergraduate approximate tuition fees, because the exact fee is calculated on the basis of number of credits which you choose, that is $23,436. And for our graduate students, because most of the students here in would look for graduate programs, 
So this is what is our fee that approximate again, as I mentioned, because the actual would come on the basis of the number of credits which you're going to choose. So 22108 and up to $6,000 is a scholarship which we are offering. Students won't be billed. Um, what do I? What do we mean by that? Is that you need not to pay anything to the university before you actually register for the classes. Even our forty dollars of application fees that's been waived off for uh, the students of CGC. So you need not to pay the forty dollars of application fee as well for our spring twenty twenty one intake. So this is a little bit about uh, University of Missouri admission requirements and uh, scholarships and all. And uh, I hope so that you got a little bit of understanding. And uh, if you have any questions and queries, want, want to know more, I'm there available virtually to speak to you all. And you can get in touch with Kamal and the team. They're very supportive and I'm sure they will be able to help you out. So thank you yes, all. Thank you. thank you for your time. Just be a uh, part of our life. Uh, we believe in transforming lives. And uh, so do I think CDC Janjari. So I, I hope so that the students, those who are interested to transfer out will actually uh, bring on a lot of difference in themselves and uh, will help to transform life of people around and be involved. That's it. That's what I would like to say. Thank you. Great. Great. Thank you, ma'am. Now some questions of the students that uh, regarding the topics. I would like to uh, ask Dr. Lee that as you mentioned, uh, the example of New Delhi Mondays. So, sir, in India, what happens? Uh, there are some farmers who buy the vegetables from the, uh, they directly sell to the market. And there are some people who buy the vegetable from farmers and they sell it in the Indian street markets. So, how about uh, in US? What is the supply chain of uh, like uh, these perishable goods? Excellent question. Um, I guess um, in, in the US, the the logistics channel is a little bit more concentrated. Uh, that's that's my understanding. Meaning that um, farmers usually has a has a more systematic uh, channel to you know uh, supply their goods. Okay. I know that uh, we do have some, for example, some grocery store, for example, Schnucks, and um, I think Trader Joe does lots of local sourcing. So these grocery store, you know, collaborate with some local farms, uh, even even farmers, you know, to, to source some local foods. And, and those, those can be very attractive, usually lower price. And another, another interesting channel is what we call farmer's market. I think that's okay. perhaps similar to, um, to, to the Mandis. Uh, I'm, perhaps the farmer's market is not as, you know, not so up to the scale as the Mandis in, in, in India, but it, 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 it's still there, okay? Yeah, but pro perhaps not um, with the large scale as, as the one in India. Okay, great. Sir, sir uh, as you know that uh, you mentioned about the career opportunities also for the students in, in supply chain management. So what are the uh, major areas, what are the highly paid areas in supply chain which a student can uh, easily get the opportunities? Um, again, as you can see, supply chain is such a comprehensive discipline. It, I actually, I didn't talk about um, the history and evolution of this discipline, which I think it might be helpful for me to talk about it a little bit. So, uh, at early time, it all started with um, operation management back in the early 20th century. Um, um, you know, in the early 1900s, I guess, um, you know, it, it is the Ford company that pioneered lots of the um, innovative practices to improve uh, production efficiency. Uh, you know, that's where, you know, we start this discipline start with the so-called scientific management pioneered by Frederick Taylor, okay? Um, you know, to improve production efficiency. And that's the birth of operation management. And then you can see over time, different business functions for manufacturing companies, they start to emerge separately. Okay. In conjunction with operation management, we're seeing transportation, logistics, okay, purchasing, um, you know, all these um, functional areas began to emerge. But interestingly, 
these function areas are managed independently or what we call in a siloed way, right? So uh, perhaps in the late 80s, 1980s and early 90s, the concept of supply chain began to emerge. So, so my, my point is to, to answer that question, yes, there are many, many opportunities. If you get a degree in supply chain, your door is wide open like Leanne just implied, you know, it, um, because it, it, it's such a comprehensive uh, area. And, and, and there are some also some emergent uh, areas, sub areas on the supply chain. For example, supply chain finance. You know, that's a sub area to study the cash flow, you know, through the supply chain, talking about the transaction between suppliers and, and buyers. Um, you know, this is, this is actually a huge industry. And, and, and I need to mention um, one company uh, actually in, in our board is a, a CASS CAS company that, that's focused on this industry to provide uh, the financial service between the third party logistic provider, three PLs and the shippers. So they are, they are actually in, they are a bank for supply chain. So, so my answer is yes, the door is widely open. Even, even you are interested in marketing, you know, there are lots of in, interaction between supply chain and marketing where marketing focuses on the customer demand side, right? You should ask the question, well, so what? If you know the customer behavior, you can predict the demand in the next six, six months or a year in the future, what you're gonna do, right? Are you going to increase your production? Are you going to revise your you know, sourcing strategy, even the network? So, so, so supply chain is closely related to other functional areas. I think your door is widely open if you get a degree in supply chain. Okay, so as we know that uh, in this difficult time, there are a lot of uh, corporates uh, who have like a lot of disruption, like they have scarcity of raw material, they have scarcity of labor. So there are a lot of challenges in, in this time the companies have been facing. But how do you see uh, the global supply chain post pandemic? What, what do you see that uh, what are the changes after this pandemic situation? They will be in the world. That's an excellent, excellent question. Uh, and, um, you know, can be a hard question. Um, um, so what we're seeing right now is, is the challenge, no question about it. And this challenge is actually not new, okay? If, if everybody recall, we actually had worldwide disruption of supply chain due to other natural disasters. If you recall the 2000, 2008 uh, Japan tsunami, for example, yeah. around 2008, I can't recall exactly the year, but Japan tsunami disrupt the supply chain in, you know, seafood and electronics supply chain at least. Um, certainly, um, we have not seen a disruption as severe as uh, COVID-19 pandemic. This is a huge challenge. But on the other hand, uh, to answer this question, my, my belief is um, this won't last forever, okay? And global economy, global supply chain is the key gonna remain the key because, you know, even, even think about US, okay? Yeah, President Trump has been, you know, advocating bringing, you know, drug supply chain back to US, right? Bringing manufacturing back to US. I mean, the concept makes sense, but what it actually requires is a better design of the supply chain network, okay? So I don't think swinging from one extreme to the other is the solution. I don't think that's gonna work because you you still cannot, we can still not afford the high, much higher cost of providing those raw materials inputs for the, the beginning stage of the supply chain for drug products, for example. We're gonna continue rely on, par, partially re, rely that on some you know, overseas mar um, uh, suppliers and manufacturer. But the challenge is, here is why supply chain analytics is important, okay? I think uh, the, the challenge and the, the issue we're facing is how to better design a supply chain from the strategic level concerning the network structure through the tactical level, that is how you su select supplier and vendor, how you select 
transportation modes, okay, to best trade off cost, lead time, transportation time or production time, and quality among so many factors. These are really um, could be complex, challenging, data driven uh, decision problems to be addressed by analytics. But I'm hopeful. I, I think global supply chain is still uh, still needed. Yeah, it has a bright okay. future. Yes. Great, great. Sir, so, as we know uh, that uh, there are a lot of countries, for example, India, we, we buy the raw material from other countries. And, and like India, there are other countries also, they are buying uh, raw material from other countries, for example, China. So they are the, they supply raw material to almost a lot of, uh, most of the countries in the world. So we buy uh, pharmaceutical products, raw material from China. And I guess in US also, they, they buy the raw material from other countries. So how do you see this yeah. scenario in, in the present time and after post pandemic, how do you see, will it be the same or and the domestic manufacturers are like in the pressure to produce more goods inside the country? For example, uh, in India, uh, we, we did not produce PPE kits before uh, one or two years back, but now we are uh, we are bulk manufacturers of PPE kits. And how do you see these changes? How do you see this scenario? Again, very good question. Okay, very thoughtful question. Um, I think um, there is no generic answer. I think the answer is going to vary by industry. Okay, it can vary by product. So in all, I think um, we need to rely on analytics to come up with the optimized solution, okay? From strategic network design, how you design your global network. Shall we uh, move some of the production back to US? I, I, I think the answer is yes, but, but shall we move all of them? I don't think so, <laughs> but which we should and which we don't, um, is is a question that should be rely on data, uh, but not a not not a dream or you know some some random thoughts. Uh, so um, so I think that this is a quite complex question simply because different industry has different characteristics. Uh, even the same industry, a company may come up with different strategies for their different product lines, right? So think about that. So this is why. Um, you know, we, we here at, uh, you know, in our program, we emphasize the use of analytics because, you know, you can, you can come, up, come up with very good concepts, right? You know, descriptive ideas, concepts, but without data-driven decision support, you know, hardly can any of those concepts be put into action. Great. I, hope, I hope that answer uh, the, the, the question somewhat. But it's indeed a, a a a complex question. Yeah, yeah, that's. A, uh, I would like to know, Miss. Uh, I would like to interact with Miss Lian also. Yeah. So, uh, Lian, how many international students are there in your campus? As you mentioned, that uh, you have students from India. So, how many Indian students uh, in total? Just in tentative numbers, are there in your campus? We have about a thousand international students on our campus, and I don't have the exact numbers, but I'd say a third of them are uh, from India. Okay. So, Ma'am, you have been to India. You studied, You mentioned that you studied in Pune. So how was your journey here? What are the challenges that you have faced and uh, how, what are the things that you liked about India? That's a long time ago. That's 22 years ago that I was in Pune, and I, was, I went back many, many times. And uh, I was smiling all day today because uh, when I see the veggie markets, that was actually my biggest passion. And I miss them till today that I can just walk out of the door here and have the uh, veggie wala for inside uh, in front of my house and just grab some fruits. So I wished I had that. But uh, the biggest thing in all, uh, without being funny and passionate about uh, my stay, is uh, what you learn culturally when you are in a different place. And, um, and I think, um, Professor Lee, in addition to what you all said about data analytics, I was thinking uh, with the data about the rising Indian market now uh, of supply chain management and my perspective from 22 years ago when I was a student at the Sanskrit department in, at Pune University uh, and now, I, um, I think 
the, uh, a big a big distinguisher is also people understanding different cultures. How does it work there? It's not just the data. It's like, how do the people think? Why do they do it in a certain way? And oftentimes I've worked in international affairs for 20, 20 some years, ever since I came back from India, basically. And, um, and yeah, uh, and that is a blessing. I've spent eight years in Korea and now eight years here in the United States and the rest back in Europe. Uh, no, two in Japan during the tsunami, 2011 was the year, Professor Lee. I was there during that time <laughs> with like the uh, evacuations and everything. Thank you. Yeah. So I got the whole spiel. Uh, so, so I still believe Besides the monetary investment you have that my parents made, they paid my year in India. Um, I still, I still take away a lot of my cultural understanding, global understanding from my first days in Pune when I was unable to cross the road because there was no traffic light and I had cars and rickshaws going around me and I was intimidated. But but um, uh, in my last line, um, uh, Kamal, I could talk about that. You invite me for a full hour and I'll talk and talk and talk. <laughs> one thing... Sure, definite, definitely, yeah. ma'am. Uh, it would be great uh, once this post pandemic situation uh, settled down, it would be great to we'll, we'll have, uh, we can invite you right. in India. Yes. Definitely, if you come to India, we can uh, share the invite to visit our campus. So it would be wonderful to have you uh, with us. Uh, uh, besides this, I would like to mention yeah. that. Uh, final line about your country. The final line was, uh, the biggest thing about India is the understanding and the concept of education. And that is why Indian students succeed. And our, uh, uh, regardless of the number of students that we have on our campus, Indian students almost all, like 89, 98% uh, graduate successfully. And that's the big thing. And I'm not surprised because I've seen how Indian parents, Indian uh, uh, institutions structure education and value it. And that's the big thing. So thank you for that extra minute. <laughs> yes, ma'am. In our campus also, uh, we believe that students should learn some practical skills also besides only academic skills. So we have uh, labs, we have, you know, uh, some cultural events, we have like public speaking events just to make the students uh, aware about the present uh, scenario. So uh, these are the things that we have been working. Uh, we would also like to mention that we, we are interested for uh, to sending our students in UMSL, maybe for credit exchange program, maybe some uh, higher education programs. We can discuss later. We can discuss with uh, Priyanka also like how we can initiate uh, to benefit our campus students. So I think uh, uh, it's, it, we come to an end. So that's, that's all from our side. It was a wonderful time to have you with us today. It was a wonderful, uh, thank you so much, Leanne. Thank you so much, Priyanka. Thank you so much, Dr. Lee. It was such an amazing session and we wish to uh, recruit few students for your, for your great institution. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you, so you much, everybody. Kamala. My and pleasure. Stay safe during COVID. <laughs> Bye. Thank you. Bye. Stay safe. Yeah. Bye-bye. Thank you, everybody.